Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm excited. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we welcome you in this place, God. Hallelujah. Have your way, God. You be seen among us, Father. God, I thank you that I have already decreased that you may increase, Father. Let your glory be seen, Father. For you said, arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Hallelujah. Darkness shall cover the earth and great darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise over you. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you for the seizing of the arising, for the seizing of the takeover, for the season that is already done. Hallelujah. So, Father, we give you praise in advance for your word, God. We thank you that you will give your word with signs following, Father. We welcome your spirit, God. We welcome the prophetic voice, Father. We depend and lean only on your voice, Father. For God, now is the time. Today is the day. Hallelujah. For God, you said now, faith. Hallelujah. Now is the time. So have your way tonight, God. I yield myself as a vessel to you, God. As a vessel of honor. In the name of Jesus. I receive your ministry, Father. God, let me minister with power. And with your anointing, Father. God, I thank you that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight, Father. That God is my desire to be fully pleasing to the Lord. Hallelujah. That, God, I will only say what you have given me to say and do what you have given me to do. Hallelujah. 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 Just lift your hands. Hallelujah. 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 You may take your seats. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I am excited. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to give God thanks for my parents in the faith. Apostle Jonathan and Prophetess Kimberly Anderson. Hallelujah. I love you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for my mom is here. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So I'm excited, right? I got some good news and some good news. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So tell me which one you want first. The good news. Hallelujah. I'm going to share with you what the Lord shared with me. He said that the devil is very angry with you. That's some good news. I live to make him angry. Praise the Lord. So the devil is very angry. And then he said to me that the cell is empty. That the cell is empty. Hallelujah. The devil is angry. And then later, it didn't even, those words didn't even come at the same time. He said that the devil was angry, and he left me with that. And I said, well, okay, amen. The devil is angry. I, I kind of like that. I don't want the devil to be happy. I, I remember when I was serving him, and he was happy. I don't want him to be happy. And then he said that the, then later on this day, he said that the cell is empty. If anybody know what jail is, when the cell is empty, that's a time to celebrate. That's a time to rejoice. For what had you bound has now loosed you. Hallelujah. For what had you under, what had you under has now, it got to let you go. Hallelujah. For the cell is empty. Hallelujah. My cell looked like poverty is empty. Hallelujah. My cell looked like torment is empty. Hallelujah. I don't know what your cell looked like, but I know what mine looked like. I can tell you right now, I have not yet seen the bottom of my bank account. Hallelujah. I have not seen the bottom of my bank account. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord came to me a couple weeks ago. He said, at least your days of lack are over. I said, well, bless the Lord. Amen, Jesus. Well, praise the Lord. Because earlier that month, earlier this year, he said, switch to premium. Gas. And I said, well, okay. No problem. Switch to premium. All right, Jesus. Even in that. Now, that might seem like a small thing to you. But I have been a regular, I have been a regular user all my life. Ever since I had a car, I had used regular gas. God never gave me a car that required premium. Even in the the world, I never had a car that required premium. But I remember, I said, well, Lord, why would you have me to switch to premium? He answered me later on. He said, what the car that you're believing for, it requires premium. So start now. Hallelujah. So start now. The car that you're believing for, it requires premium. So I'm going to let you know that your cell is empty. He showed me that that's not like a, I know it sounds cliche. For a a second. It sounds cliche. But he actually showed me a vision of an empty cell. And the door was open and there was nobody in there. 
He showed me a clear in the clear as day in a vision that it was a cell and there was nobody in there. He said that all that's left is for you to shut the door behind you. Hallelujah. See, because we have to understand in this next move that your deliverance is going to take diligence. Hallelujah. That you're not that you walked away from the jail cell, but your deliverance is going to take diligence. It's going to take diligent prayer. It's going to take diligent fasting. It's going to take diligent giving. Hallelujah. It's going to take diligent attention to the word that God. But as you go higher, it doesn't get, it, it takes diligence up there. The higher you go, it takes diligence, right? The higher I went when I switched to premium and God told me to start eating differently and eating healthier. When I did that, I had to, I, it took diligence to do that. Because there are times when, I, when it seemed like, I was like, well, Lord, um, Jesus, now you told me to do this, but it took diligence for me to keep my faith and believe God. Take no thought for my life. Hallelujah. What I should eat or what you guys know the word. Take no thought for my life. So it took diligence to do that. So in this season, in this next move, your deliverance is going to take diligence, right? If we can get Proverbs 10 verse 4. Hallelujah. See, we celebrate right now. I'm celebrating with the bakers. I hear that testimony sometimes firsthand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I get to sit and be at the feast. Praise the Lord. I see what the Lord is doing in their lives, but they know that their, that their deliverance has taken diligence. I remember the time in their lives when we would say, Lamika, you want to go? She was like, no spending money this week. And I said, well, amen, Jesus. No spending. Okay. I wasn't on the bandwagon right then. So I was like, what you mean? You just got paid. Amen. But her deliverance, and now look, look at what God is doing in their lives. Her, de- her deliverance took diligence. God is giving them honey money all the time. In the time when I went to them and I said, hey, you want? She said, nope, not this week. This ain't the week for that. Now it's honey money all the time. Hallelujah. I'm excited. <laughs> they forgetting about five. I don't, I don't think I forget about $500 right now. I don't think I forget. Okay. Verse, um, Proverbs 10, verse 4. It says, he becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent maketh rich. Now, we know that in this scripture, we're talking about rich and wealth and money. But if we can take this scripture, like I love the way dad does that, and apply it to any area of your life. He who deals with a slack hand will end up in poverty. If you deal with a slack hand in your prayer life, your prayers won't be heard. You'll end up in poverty. Come on now. If you deal with a slack hand in your relationships, you won't be, it, it, won't, it won't prosper. Husband, if you deal with a slack hand with your wife, what do you think is going to happen? Ain't nothing going to happen, right? Wives, the same thing. What's going to happen, right? So if you deal with a slack hand, but what God wanted me to remind you is that now is the time. Now is the time. When I tell y'all, I'm standing here, I'm like, Lord, what you want me to say? I have prayed. I fasted. I prayed again. I was fasting before I was asking, even asked to preach. I said, well, amen. Well, I'm on the right track then, Jesus. Come on now, Jesus. Do that thing. Amen. But I was like, Lord, what would you have me to say? What would you have me to do? And I remember sharing a word with that. The Lord said to me that at least because I had went through, you guys were here when when, um, Prophetess Ben was here, right? And the worry that was on my life. I didn't realize that worry was torment. Now I realize that worry is a form of fear. So now I understand that. God brought me some understanding because I was like, hold on now, Jesus. Now, hold on. Now, we ain't back there no more. So what the Lord did was show me that worry is a form of fear. And worry is a form that you're not settled in the love. You're not settled in his ability to provide for you. You're not settled in his ability to do what he said he was going to do for your life or for your family. I remember he came to me. He said, at least you're worrying for something that has nothing to do with you. Your prosperity, the only thing you have to do with is be obedient. How it comes, when it comes, when it, how, who is going to come through has nothing to do with you. So you're considering, you're looking, at, you're looking at your hand, you're looking at your situation, but it has nothing to do with you. All you have to do is remain obedient and diligent. All right? Obedient, and I guarantee with Miss LaWanda, it took diligent fasting. It took diligent praying. It took diligent to believe. It's, 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 listen, our only work, the Bible says, is to believe. So it takes diligent faith to believe. But when God came to me and said, at least the cell is empty. I got excited. If we can get um, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. And he started talking to me about this scripture. And I called one of my sisters, and I started talking about this scripture. And I said, well, Father, okay, this is, now he, this is three different times. Three different words. He said, now is the time. Your cell is empty. And then I had this scripture a couple weeks ago. And if you look at that scripture, let me turn to it. I got the King James Bible. Praise the Lord. All right, 1 John 3, 8. 
It says, he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So I was reading over that scripture, and I said, Father, thank you that you destroyed the works of the devil. Father, thank you that you've annihilated the enemy in my life. Father, thank you that you're doing it for our ministry. You're doing it for people around me, God. You're doing it for my mother. You're doing it for my father. You're doing it for my brothers. I'm just praying. I'm, God, thank you so much. Thank you so much that you're destroying the works of the devil. He said, you're right, Elise, but look at that word. I said, well, okay. You destroy the, he said, you're thinking English destroy that I break down the works of the devil, that I break and I, I said, well, yeah, you destroy the works of the devil. Well, he said, well, look up that word in the Greek. And I said, okay, no problem. So I look up that word in the Greek. I'm not going to be before you long. I just want you to know that the cell is empty. Okay. That's all I want to do tonight is let you know that the cell is empty. So I'm reading over the scripture and I'm decreeing that the, that the works of the devil are destroyed, that Jesus Christ was made manifest for that. And I said, father, he destroys poverty. He said, well, at least the poor will always be among you. If he destroyed poverty. The poor will always be among you. And I said, well, that don't make sense. He was like, right. It doesn't. I said, okay, well, he destroys poverty. I said, he destroys sickness. He said, at least it's going to be some sick folk in the earth. They're not going to believe my word. I said, well, you destroy sin. He said, no, everybody's not going to get saved. He want them to. Everybody's not going to walk with Jesus. I had to come to the realization in my own mind that everybody is not going to walk with Jesus. So I said, well, all right, then. I had to peace out half of them. Y'all not going to walk with Jesus. Bye, because y'all not going to walk with Jesus. Because I'm choosing to walk with the Lord, right? And so if you look up that word destroy, this was good to me. That word destroy is actually the word lulo, L-O-O dash O, right? That word means to loose someone from something. To loose one from something. To unbind, to untie. So it didn't mean what I thought. Right? Right. So I did, that, it all came together. So I'm like, okay, it didn't mean what I thought. It didn't mean to come and demolish and break and annihilate. No, he came to, and that, you know, we, that, that word work means ergon. That means work, business, all of that stuff. He said, so the way you pray that, Elise, is I came to loose you from the work of the devil. I came to loose you from the business of the devil. So I come to declare to you that you have been loosed from the business of the devil. So the longer you, if you want to sit in that cell, you can sit there. But if the door is wide open, you have been loosed from the business of the devil. You have been loosed from sin. You have been loosed from poverty. You have been loosed for lack. And he says, at least I'm waiting on you. Right? He's waiting on you. The whole time that the children of Israel were in the, were in the, were in the wilderness, right? They were just wandering around for 40 years, an 11 days journey, the Bible says. But it took them 40 years. 11 days. 40 years. 11 days, 40 years, 11 days, 40 years, one more time, 11 days, 40 years, 11 days, all because in their own minds, they did not believe they were loose from their captives. They stayed in the wilderness, I believe, and what God revealed to me, they stayed there because they didn't believe they were free. They didn't have a free mindset. They didn't walk like they were free. Every time they turn around, they were thinking about their old situation. Every time they turn around, they start thinking about the leeches and the, onion, the, and the onions. Every time they turn around, they're talking about their old life and their old sin. Every time, if a person is always talking about what they've been through, you don't believe that you're through it. Come on now. I'm a witness because I used to talk about my sin all the time. I used to, everywhere I go, I give a testimony. Lord, thank you. The Lord delivered me from homosexuality. He delivered me from lying. He... Now, are you, are you delivered? Are you delivered? I said, well, yeah, I'm delivered. He said, all right, well, let it go. Yeah. He said, well, let it go. I said, well, Jesus, what? that's it? He said, that's it. Now, during this time, I'm going to tell you the truth. During this time, this is when, when the dreams were happening. The last time I preached before you all, and that's when he told me that. When the dreams were happening, every time I go and rehearse and I preach, then they had me wearing a shirt that said ex-homosexual on my body. I'm like, what the world going on now, Jesus? Now, I woke up the next day. I was like, Lord, I feel kind of weird. Like, Lord, something is wrong. Like, this ain't right. And he, he took me right back. He said, that shirt that she was wearing yesterday, that wasn't right. He said, because you're not an ex-anything. You're not an ex-anything. 
The Bible says who the son has set free is free indeed. Come on, somebody. The Bible says, hallelujah, that once you come to Jesus and you confess your sin, when you come to Jesus and you give life to Christ, that ain't even the time of confession. You don't come to Jesus and, Lord, forgive me for all my sins, Jesus. No. How, how can you? You were never saved. So you were doing what sinners do. Dogs bark, sinners sin, right? So when you came to give your life to Jesus Christ, when you confess that he is Lord, meaning master, and then he was Savior, meaning he, re- he rescued you from that place, loosed you, set you free, why are you still talking about it? So now somebody else asked me in this season, he leaves. I have a couple of people, not my friend, not my friend, not my friends. But it was a, a teacher called and asked me, at least I want to talk to you, I want you to come talk to a group of students about your testimony. I said, well, Jesus, are they trying to get free or they just want to hear? They was like, oh, we just wanted, she wanted to share. I said, no, I don't do that. Oh, no, I don't do that. He was like, what you mean? I don't do that. Now, I'm talking to another pastor. I'm like, I don't, I don't sit and rehearse my story. Because if, you, if it's done, it's done. The Bible says, I am a now a new creation. All old things have passed away. Behold, you are become new. So if you used to be poor before you came to Jesus, all old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Hallelujah. If you were walking around with nothing but prosper, you were under cursed conditions. The Bible says that the blessing of Abraham has come upon your life. Hallelujah. I'm excited about that. I know these things. I said, Lord, what would you like me to do tonight? He said, just encourage them. Just encourage them. We've gotten a lot of word. A lot of word. I'm talking about gallons and gallons of word. You hear me? I'm talking about three hour long word. Word, Jesus. I'm excited about it. Three hour long word. And if anybody heard during that three hour long word, one of the things that stuck with me is he said, God said himself, he was waiting for you all to get ready. So this is a shouting moment for all of us, right? Because he said he was waiting for you all to get ready. So what does that mean if he said that? What does that mean right now today that he said he was waiting on us to get ready? We ready right now. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. I'm praying for the synapses to fire off tonight in your brain. You are ready. If you're sitting on the sound of his voice and you know you believe in for things, you know you ask God to do things, you know you ask God to prosper this ministry, I know I stay before God about exceeding grace because I know what that man and that woman of God did for my life. I'm like LaWanda. I came here with no high school diploma. I know what this ministry has done for my life. And if God says that we're ready, I know that we're praying for the city to be at our doors. So every Sunday that I come in the building, I'm looking for the city to be at our doors. He said that I was ready. I'm looking for the laying on of hands. The casting out of devils. I'm looking to be made rich today, right now. Hallelujah. I'm looking for, if not, man, listen. 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 It is no coincidence that the Lord said through the man of God that we're ready. In the next couple of days, not even a week later, the Lord showed me that the cell was empty. And then he gave me a scripture and told me to look up the word differently in this season. That you've been loosed. From the power of Satan. Come on now. In your own prayer time, you should not have a day of sadness. Because everything that the devil does is strategic to get you out of the presence of God. Because the Bible says, you get 1 John 4, 4. The Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So I was riding in my car confessing that. I said, Father, greater is he that is in me. Than he that is in this world. I don't care what it looks like. Greater is he that is in me. There's poverty in the world. Greater is he that is in me. If, you, if greater is in you, you have no business dealing with that. That's the voice of God. If greater is in you, what do you do dealing with poverty? See, when we think greater is he that is in me, I used to think greater is he, I'm going to cast out devils. Uh. Greater is he, I'm going to rebuke Satan. Greater is he. Listen, it's more than devils in the world. It's more than demons in the world. There is sickness in the world. There is poverty in the world. There are broken marriages in the world. There's all that is in the world. So greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. But everything the devil tries to bring you is to get you out of him. Right? It's to get you out of him. Because I was confessing that. I was like, Father, thank you, God. Greater is he. Because I be having, listen, I don't like my car. 
I appreciate it. I thank God for it. I put premium gas in it, but I don't like it. Okay? I'm believing God. I remember when Pastor started preaching about the new coat. That was my scripture. I'm standing on that thing. I say, Jesus, we're going to another level in the spirit now. We need to take this natural with me now. Come on, somebody. You know you're growing in the spirit. Your natural need to catch up. Hallelujah. I'm looking around. You're, if you're growing in the faith, Shantae, you're growing in faith. You're growing in the word. You're serving God all the days of your life. Your house and your car needs to catch up. Hallelujah. You're walking with Jesus. You're praying. You're praying in tongues. You're doing all of that. Your situation needs to catch up. But guess what? He said, y'all ready. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, y'all ready. So I was like, Lord, this need to catch up. He said, you ready? So back to my greater is he that is in me. I was praying. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. He said, yep, as long as you stay in me. I said, well, Jesus, we have a lot of conversations in my car. Like, you know, I'm ready for it to be gone, but I don't say bye to it. We're going to have some new conversations in my new car. He might show up better. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to have some better conversations because it, it, it'll look more like him. You know, he'll, be, he'll feel more welcome on that ostrich. Hallelujah. With them seat warmers. Come on, somebody. He'll feel more welcome. Hallelujah. It got seat memory. Come on now. He'll feel more welcome in the BMW 528i. He'll feel more welcome. Come on now. And he'll feel more welcome. Come on now. He'll feel more welcome. Y'all see, I ain't playing. The Lord, I'm telling you, the Lord will feel more welcome. Because he is God. He will feel more welcome. But everything that the devil does is strategic to get you out of the presence of God. Every single thing. Because greater is greater in you. Greater is he that is in you. But you are not greater than the devil. Not you as in your flesh. Your natural man. Ask the, son, the um, sons of Zebedee. Seven sons of Seba. Ask them, was, was they flesh greater? No. It was, the devil kicked them out. Right? So everything that the devil sends you, every person, every voice, the devil even ministers sermons and give you scripture. I am a witness. I was starting my business. It, it, listen, the devil had me stop my business for an entire year because I let him preach me a sermon. And he used scripture. Come on now. So I say, he said, at least the, the Lord came to visit me, the Lord. He said, hey, at least, hey, you know the devil preached scripture, preach, preach sermons. And I said, the devil, what? He said, the devil preached sermons. And I said, well, what you talking about? He said, he preached a sermon to you. I said, what are you talking about? He said, you're starting your business, and you're like, okay, Lord, I'm starting this. Here we go again, Jesus. All right. He says, but the devil came. I didn't recognize it was the voice of the devil. That's why I thank God to discern between good and evil. See, now my senses are being sharpened. I can discern between good and evil. I know when it's the voice of the enemy now, and it's the voice of God. So he comes to me, and he says, you know, you've been trying this business for a long time, but I will not strive a man forever. Come on now. That was the first one. That was, that was, the, that was the devil that came and told me that. You know God will not strive a man forever. So then I shut it all down. I said, well, Lord... You don't strive with man forever. All right, Jesus. I tried. All right. It's all, you know. I mean, Lord, I gave you the first fruit. I mean, Lord. And so I stopped the business for a whole year. People ask me, hey, Lee. No, man, no, I ain't doing it anymore. So I went to go look for a better job. I was like, well, Lord, if this is what the result is, I'm going to still serve you, though. I'm going to still serve God. I'm going to still pray. I'm going to still fast. I'm going to still minister your word. I'm going to still do all this. And then when he let me know, he said, well, at least if you still serve me, still pray, still read the word, still get all this revelation, you're then falling into the scripture that says, ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. He said, now that don't make sense. I said, well, hold on, Jesus. He said, no, 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 no. He said, now you, you, you going to stop what I gave you. You're going to stop the, the channel that I gave you to bring prosperity in because you're now aware that there are no heavenly breach trucks. Everybody, no heavenly breach trucks. He said, you're not, now you're going to stop the method that I gave you. You're going to stop it. 
But yet you're going to still meditate on the word, come to church, hear the word. You have now become religious. You have now become religious. I say, well, Lord, Lord, wait, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. He say, now, at least, if you can get my presence, I can give you what you need. I said, okay, if you can get my presence, I can give you what you need. Now, can I show y'all what he showed me? Okay, go to John 21. I love the Lord, y'all. He loved me, y'all. Amen. Shoot. Okay. Verse 3. Now, this, when he showed me this, I was like, Jesus, see how much I love you, Jesus? Look, it says, verse 3, it says, Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a-fishing. That's what Peter said. He got tired of waiting. He was like, man, I thought this was it. I go a-fishing. I remember dad preached that thing that, ooh, I was like, Lord, ooh, Jesus, I went a-fishing. Lord, right? I go a-fishing. See, the devil wants you all to go a-fishing. He wants you to stop praying. He wants you to stop waiting. He wants you to stop sowing. He wants you to stop doing all those. Things. He wants you to go a fishing. Because that's, the devil is bringing messages, sermons, and sabotage. The devil is trying to sabotage your victory. He's trying to sabotage your destiny. You understand what I'm saying? He, he will make you get frustrated with your situation and then I ain't going to read no more. Excuse me? Wait, wait, what? I'm frustrated. This taking too long. I ain't going to sow no more. He is trying to sabotage your destiny. I'm getting tired of waiting. I'm just going to do it my way. And guess what he just did? Got you out of the presence of God. Because we can live in the holies of holies. We can live in the presence of God. The Lord said that to me, and then I come in this morning, and Dad was teaching. I was smiling so big. I was like, he going to look at me like I'm weird. And I was like, let me just fix my face. Because I was just talking to him. He's like, I was like, Lord, I enter to your gates with thanksgiving. He was like, hey, you already here. You can live in the holies of holies. But anyway, the devil wants you to go a fishing. So you'll say, I'm not, going, I'm, I'm not going to church no more. This ain't working. I'm not going to church anymore. Right? They'll have you start to distrust those who you should be trusting. They ain't for me. They ain't, they're not for me. I'm not with those people I'm leaving. Come on now. So now when the prophet showed up and talked about the people leaving... I was like, Lord, Lord, they went a fishing. <laughs> Them jokers gone fishing. I don't mean to call the people jokers, Jesus, I'm sorry. But they went fishing. I'm not going fishing. Not without his presence. If he don't tell Elise go fish, I'm not fishing. Right? So listen, about my business, I was sitting, I'm reading. I'm like, okay, Jesus, come on now. I go a fishing. I could stay there all day. I go a fishing. Jesus. Okay. They say unto him, We also go with thee. So now they got friends to join in with they going to fishing. Now you got people who you found who they tired too, so you go talk to them. You go find somebody who broke too, so you go talk to them. This man preaching all that prosperity. You you increase yet? Did you did you increase yet? You been doing all that too, huh? Come on, man, let's go. Y'all went a fishing. That's that whispering. They go fishing. Did, you, did, your, did your baby manifest yet? They told you that you was going to get pregnant. Did your baby come yet? I'm going to fishing. Come on. I'm, I'm talk, I know. Listen. 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 Y'all, I'm telling y'all. God will give you discerning the thoughts. God will have you sit around some people and hear some stuff and just turn and be. What? You accidentally in line. And people talking behind you, and you turn around. You're like, well, who is that talking like that? Oh, Jesus, they from my church, Lord. <laughs> Jesus. Lord, you go to hide. I go to hide. Like, oh, no, no. No, because if you see me, I'm going to I'm a, I'm a, I'm a say something about like that because that wasn't right. So, no, no. So, well, I don't want no sin about mission, Jesus. So, no. So, listen. Then you find some people that's with you in your situation. That's why I'm not love when dad says, find somebody who's doing better than you. Talk to them. Talk to them. Talk to them. So, okay, keep reading. 
So he found some people to go with him, right? And remember, all this, he's talking about my business to me. He found some people to go fishing. He says, but when the morning was come, this verse 4, but when the morning was come, was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Now, this is after the resurrection, right? After what they've been waiting for showed up. After. See, it was coming. It was coming. Now, I would have got to them faster because he, they were on the shore when they had this conversation. But now he had to call from them from the shore. They went a fishing. But your manifestation still came to the place you were supposed to be. But you're out fishing. But your stuff came to where you were supposed to be. But you went fishing. Great, thank God for the greater mercy of Jesus Christ. Thank God that he understood their situation in that moment. But when you, when you go with fishing, you don't know. I remember dad said that and that blessed me. He said, you don't know that your blessing was five seconds around the corner. You didn't know that it was right there waiting for you. And then when she went to fishing, it showed up and was like, hey. Hey. Well, I guess I'm going on somewhere else then, Jesus. In Matthew 21, it talks about when they were talking about the, um, the sons and all this kind of stuff, right? And they were talking about, let me see. I'm going to stay right here real quick. Hold on. Let me finish this. Hold my mule, Jesus. Hold my mule. I am just very excited about the word. Hold my mule. Because, listen, I got some things going on, y'all. In the next 30 days, I'm declaring it already. Within the next 30 days, I'm bold enough to say in the next 30, I don't even think it's going to take that long because we're in a time of infallible proofs. Come on, somebody. We're in a time of infallible proof. That means your, your, your thing, you will get gained that you can't explain. Doors are open for you that you didn't think were going to open. Doors are shut for you that you didn't think would shut. Hallelujah. So I'm declaring, and the, y'all going to see me up here. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, first thing I'm going to say is, it ain't even been 30 days, y'all, yet. But the Lord did it. But the Lord did it. Because now I understand what I'm supposed to be doing and how I'm supposed to be doing it. You understand what I'm saying? So listen, we get to this place. And Jesus saith unto them, children, have ye any meat? They answer. Y'all went fishing and didn't catch nothing? What? So y'all left and didn't get nothing? So you left and you still drive the same car? So I've never got a chance to voice my opinion on that, Jesus. But I was mad about that thing. Anyway, so Listen. It says, and he said, he said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship and you shall find. Right? So what Jesus said to me, he said, at least pay very close attention to the words that I used in that. He said, because the first miracle that you are believing for when you first started your business was John 4. When he told them, cast your net and you're drawing a catch. That's before they were disciples. Before during that time, they were, they were walking with Jesus, but before they knew him and was walking with him and all this kind of stuff. He said, cast your net and you'll find fish. So they pulled in a drop which they could not break, but that, that the net began to break. That's what I was standing for in the beginning of my business. And so when things went kind of weird on me, I went to fishing. And I was like, Lord, mm-mm, this, this is not happening like you told me it would happen. He said, you didn't do it like I told you to do it. And I said, well, okay, amen, I got that, I take that. So when the devil came and preached his sermon about he will not strive, oh man, forever. I knew I, come on now, come on now. So then the Lord brought me to this scripture, another, the same scripture with the same situation, the same circumstance about you going into fishing, your first catch, you're going to pull in a whole lot. So that's why I've been saying, I'm first catch, I'm pulling a whole lot, right? He said, pay close attention that he said disciples this time. His disciples. So I don't care what you walked away from that the Lord told you to pick back up. You are still his disciple. You are still a chosen person. You are still in fellowship with the most high God. That's why he was able to show up even though they went a fishing. Even though I went a fishing. When I came, he said, at least you are still a disciple. Come on now. You are still a disciple. I don't care what mistake you made. I don't care what you said. You are still a disciple. I don't care when you drop the business because you heard, because you listened to a word from the enemy. Then the word, then the devil give you confirmation on the word. Mm-hmm. Now you're real confused. Because now, now people are preaching and confirming the word you heard. And you're like, oh, snap. Oh, snap. 
This is real. But then the whole time that you misused the word that was being preached. Misused it. And so now I'm sitting there in condemnation and all this other stuff, right? Because when the pastor started preaching, I'm going to tell you exactly when it happened. When the pastor started preaching, right, Dad? I love him so much. He was preaching, and he said, um, what you do in the flesh will not prosper. I said, oh, geez, I did my business in the flesh. I said, oh, Lord, that's why I ain't prosper. I did it in the flesh. You said you want to strive a man forever. Now the devil preached me a whole sermon and gave me confirmation from the man of God. That's real. So now I have this devil preaching me this. I have the man of God preaching this. Seems like it's confirming this, but it's not. But it's not. The devil's job is to pull you out of the presence of God, pull you away from your destiny, pull you from what's rightfully yours. He will, he will use the Bible to do so. Whatever, because he know we're a word church. So he can't come to me and be like, at least your business is going to fail. That's not going to work. I'm a word woman. The Bible says, whatever I put my hands to shall prosper. Right? Whatever I put my hands to shall prosper. So I know my, no, but when he came to me with a word, I was like, oh, Lord. I was just going to go there. Exactly how he did Jesus. Pastor preaching with me. I love that. Praise the Lord. Come on now. So I was just about, because the Lord showed me, I said, well, Lord, you got to give me an example. Anytime I hear from God, I need an example in scripture. I said, well, Father, give me an example. Give me an example of that. He said, well, Jesus, when Jesus, when, when the devil took Jesus all the way to the top of the mountain, right? He took him up there to tempt him. What did Jesus come for? He came for, he came for all this to be his. He said, sit here. So I made the earth your footstool. He came for you and I to make the earth his footstool, which is our footstool because we are the body of Christ, right? So when the devil went up and said, hey, confirming scripture, hey, if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all this. Now, was not, is that not what he came for? Right? Is that not what Jesus came for? Yeah. And the devil's still making that same offer to thousands of people all over the world. If you bow down and worship me, I'll give you the house. You bow down and worship me, I'll give you this. See, when we think that, oh, no, the devil's not doing it anymore. Anytime that you choose Amscot over prayer, you bow down and worship him, he'll give you all this stuff. Anytime that you choose a loan over a heavenly grant, bow down and worship me, I will give you all this stuff. Come on now. Come on, every time that you say that, if you, if you, I, I, if you, hey, listen, it's an, it's an easier way, it's a way out. Now, would that way have seemed easier to Jesus? Because Jesus, the Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. So he knew what he had come to do. He knew what he had to face for us. But when the devil offered him, he said, if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all of this. But Jesus was able to discern between good and evil. No, that don't sound right. Because, yes, that's my end. Yes, that's what it looks like. But this is not the road that I'm supposed to be, be on. Something, something ain't right about this. I can imagine Jesus like, come to him. Like, no, man, this, no, no, no. Him and him only shall I serve. Because, see, it's always a little something in there that'll, that, that'll get you indicated that this is not from God. When, it got, when God had me go re- research the scripture, he would not strive a man forever, it was a clear indicator that he was not talking about my business. I was not walking in sin. He was not talking about my business. I was like, oh, so you got to rightly divide the word of truth? Oh, okay. Okay, Jesus. So rightly divide the word of truth. Okay. So, again, the end result is that the devil will do anything to get you out of the presence of God and to get you away from your destiny. Right? Anything he can come up with, anything that he can do. I didn't start it, but I'm at 15 minutes. Amen. Anything that he can do, that's what he wants you to do. He wants you to go a fishing. Zamara, he wants you to go a fishing. He wants you to find another way to do it. You're a young man in the kingdom. When I tell you last week, I was praying for you, brother. I was praying for you. I was praying for you. I'm talking about prayer. Because the Lord showed me your circle. 
And you don't realize, yeah, they're older than you. They're more advanced in the world they seem. But you're the mature one in the circle. They're still falling to the temptation of the enemy. So the, the Lord wants you to change, change some of that. Even though they quote the scripture, they walk with the Lord, I'm saved, bro. I walk with Jesus. They're still falling under the same temptations of the devil. You understand what I'm saying? That circle. You know what circle I'm talking about. They seem like, man, they've been walking. Man, these dudes, man, I can hear you. Man, these dudes been walking with Jesus. I need to follow them. I need to connect with them, man. They, they got this thing. They got it. Oh, man. No, the, devil, the Lord says no. You are the one. In the circle. You are the example of what God could do. Hallelujah. See, time is not an essence to God. When he took Paul, who was killing Christians, and within a short time he was preaching the gospel. Time is not an essence to the Lord. But your faith and your diligence, the seeds you've sown, that's what God remembers. Hallelujah. See, a long, a long time will make you religious. A long time will make you puffed up. A long, I've, I've experienced all of the above. A long time with Jesus will make you know all the scripture, but you won't have nothing to show for it. A long time will make that happen to you. So t- listen. Okay? Amen. So listen. I'm excited. Jesus, I'm excited. Where was I going, Jesus? <laughs> I love you. Okay. I don't know where I was going. Matthew 21. See, Grandma, you always on my... You got me. Grandma, get you. Amen. Let me see here where I was going. Okay. Now, this is... I'm not going to tell you what verse yet because like Dad says, you guys like to read ahead. So, this is me, and I'm reading the Bible... And this is, remember when I said a long time will make you religious? A long time will make this happen. A long time, all this stuff will happen. You've been with the, walking with the Lord. Now, I've been saved almost seven years, right? doesn't seem very long, seven years, short time. But for the word that we receive, where should I be in seven years? You show sure enough, right? <laughs> right. So, yeah, it takes a time to change your mind. The Bible says, you know, people say in the world, it takes three years to renew your mind. It takes three years to change your habits, all this kind of stuff. But that still is not seven years, right? And so I begin to pray, and I begin to seek the face of God. I shut down everybody and everything in this last course of time right now. Everybody. Everybody. I said, okay, everybody be quiet. Everybody hush. Because you got one person, they rebuking you and saying you this. Then you got another person who encourage you and giving you prophetic word. Everybody hush. Sometimes you have to do that. Everybody hush. I need to hear from God. Because God has clearly shown me, at least you've been saved for seven years under this man of God. Where should you be? Really think about it. If you're a person who, now that you know everything that's going to happen, see what happens is we get so afraid in the time, we get so afraid in that waiting place. You get so afraid in the waiting room till you don't move. You get so afraid because you're, you're afraid of the unknown. But what we have to still remember is because you're afraid of the unknown, you still understand that God is good. And he only does wondrous things. There is no evil in him. So when he says sow the seed, you can sow it because you understand at the end of this, God is good. But see, I had a thing where I was just sitting and waiting. I'm like, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, not, not today. Okay. Then I sow a seed. Okay. Oh, but my hands, now I'm sowing seed with hands tied. So I'm sowing seeds like this. No working. I'm just sowing seed. That's the equivalent of you riding down the street and throwing money out the window. You're just sowing seed. You're just sowing, scattering. I'm, anytime I hear a good word, I'm sowing. you just sowing seed, all kinds of seed. you just sowing seed. But my hands are tied. Business not working. Flyers, ain't, flyers are nowhere. The instruction I have not done. So now I'm sowing seed. And I'm doing all this kind of stuff. But yet, I'm still telling people about Jesus and how he'll make you rich. And he'll do all this kind of stuff. So he said, at least think back. If you, were, if you understood right now where you would be in seven years, how would you do this differently? How would you do your time at Exceeding Grace differently? I said, okay. He said, because this is what will happen. If you go to uh, Matthew 21, verse 43. You guys see that? 
This is what will happen. Therefore, I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Right? You know that word nations means peoples. Right? Now, we look at that around there. He's talking to the Pharisees and all this kind of stuff. But you become a Pharisee when you're still you're hearing and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. When you're sitting and hearing, he's not going to have you just keep sitting here and listen to all the apostles saying, and the, and the woman of God and the man of God are believing for people to get this, and you've been the same person in the same church for 10 and 15 and 20 years, and you're still not getting it. You, do you think that's really encouraging their soul? But do you believe that God is going to leave their soul in Sheol? Not that it was ever there. But do you think that God's going to leave that like that? He will move you and put in somebody that's going to do the work. He'll move you and put in the people because he has a plan for this ministry. He has a plan for this man and this woman of God. He has a plan for us in here. He has a plan for us. So when I say, I read, they say, whoa, 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 whoa. He said, this is, this is where, listen, this is where you'll be on your way to. He said, I didn't say, he didn't say, I'll take salvation from you. He said, the kingdom of God, the rule of God, the dominion of God will be taken from you. And I give it to somebody else. Right? Who going to do something? Now, y'all, if y'all remember, Barbara kindly reminded me this the other day. God bless her. And Wayne gave a word last year. And June is a year. God said, in a year, he looking for some fruit. And if you do not bear fruit, I will cut you down. So if your neighbor go to disappearing, so if I look around and somebody go to disappearing, I'm not going to be, because I remember what the Lord said. I'm not going to be moved by the next move or the next event. I'm not going to be moved by that. Because now, like mom said, he'll at least take, you got to do something. You have to do something, right? So he didn't say that I'll take your salvation from you. He didn't say, he said, you, can, you, you know you can walk with Jesus and serve the Lord and, and not sin and go to heaven and, and, just, and just do that. Just do that. You can sit under a man of God that believes that. You know, friends, you just guys, just love your neighbor. Yes. I don't care where you were last night. Jesus loves you. Baby, Jesus cared where you was last night. I'm let you know. He would take the kingdom from you. So what I'm saying, you're sitting on a man and woman of God who understand what our assignment in the earth is. They understand what the calling on this ministry is. They understand what they're supposed to be doing. I will never forget the day when dad, when the word was revealed to him that he's like David in the cave. He got them broke, busted, and disgusted. But when they came out, they were mighty men of valor. These are the kind of people that come to him. I came here with no, no high school, no nothing, nothing, job, nothing. I didn't have no clothes, nothing. But the assignment on their lives is to take us to a place that we, could, that we couldn't have dreamed of. To take us to a place. Hallelujah. To take your marriage, to take your children, to take you to a place. To the place. The Bible says that God searched the whole earth for a place for the Israelites. He searched the whole earth and said, okay, that's what I want for my people. It is good. Now, y'all come here. Y'all come here. Okay? So what I'm telling you is God is searching the entire earth, and he's already prepared a place for you on this earth already. Already. If you look at Ephesians 2.10 in the Amplified, the Bible says, you can put that up there, and the, the Bible says he prearranged, predestined, made ready for you to live. So your place, just like the Israelites, how it's already established. It's already furnished. Your business is already prospering. Your children are already born. Hallelujah. Your husband is already there. Your wife is already there. It's already there. But if he has to, he will bring people. Now, we're asking God to bring people to bring the city in, right? I'm asking God to add them, not replace them. Not replace. We want them to add. But God will replace he will replace. You understand what I'm saying? God will replace. Come on now. He will replace. Replacement value. He will replace you. He will. Okay. I am. Listen. So I'm. Listen. 
All, I have to, all you have to do is do what he says to do. And you say, Elise, how do I know if God is telling me? Well, did mom say it? Did dad say it? God said it. See, we, we have to really get that in our hearts. Did mom say it? Did dad say it? God said it. Well, that doesn't agree with where I am with life right now. That doesn't agree with what the Lord said to me. That doesn't agree with me right now. Y'all laughing. It doesn't agree. I, I see all, all y'all, but I see some of them missing. That doesn't agree. Coming to church on Wednesday nights, no, it doesn't agree with my lifestyle. I have to go to practice. That doesn't agree. Church on the fifth Sunday, where I come from, we don't go to church on the fifth Sunday. That doesn't agree. That doesn't agree. Praying tongues. Pr- tongues. With tongues. Tongues? You mean tongues. What you mean praying in tongues? Praying in tongues? What's tongues? Show to- No. That doesn't agree with where I am right now. Come out from among them and be ye separate. That doesn't agree with my lifestyle right now. That doesn't agree with where I am. You sound so full of yourself. Come to church on time. That doesn't agree with my time right now. That doesn't agree, Jesus. Mm-mm, no. But you're so spiritual that you can get a word from God. Now, this is what God said to me one time. I am not lying to y'all. For real. He said, at least you're so spiritual. You know my word. Now, this is how God talked to me because, you know, I'm, if you know me, I'm kind of goofy. So, you know, Lord. Okay, amen. So, <laughs> just don't give me no sugar. Don't do that. So if it, it doesn't agree, and I'm, I'm, I'm listening to the word. I'm getting revelation. This is recently that the Lord said this to me. I'm for real. I almost hurt my feelings, but I know he loves me. And we're kind of over that season of my life of the hurt feeling thing. That thing don't work. I'm in my house. I'm ora baba satarebo koshita. Praise you, Jesus. I exalt you, God. You are Lord of all the earth. Ora. I know my neighbors be like, who is she? Talking to so rababasa, Lord, you're good. Mm. Jesus, mm. he said, At least you know you've been in this condo for a year. I said, God, and you're so good. <laughs> Woo! You kept me here for a year, Jesus. Oh, <laughs> rababasa, mm. you, you, like he hit you. Oh, right. He said, You know, you've been for a year. I said, Yeah. Lord, you did it, Jesus. The man sent me a text message. I said, well, man, this man is 70. He communicate, through te- communicate your lease through a text message. I said, Jesus, I'm, you know, I'm going to use his paper. Sign his paper. So he sent me a text. He said, you know, you've done good this year. Go ahead and stay. No rate increase. I said, well, but Jesus, you did it. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Yes, God. Praise you. Oh, Jesus. So told Rabbi. Now I'm on the flow. Before the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Mom knows where I'm going with this. So I'm praying. I'm, oh, I don't mind laying posture before the Lord. If he requires me to lay posture on my face, I would do it. If he requires it, I would do it. My ground is tiled through and through my whole house. There's no carpet in sight. So when I lay posture, <laughs> It's cold and it's hard. Posture it before the Lord. Okay? Now, I don't like, I don't prefer, I prefer tile through and through. But I'm on my face, not late. Y'all laughing? Come on. I tell y'all my business. Because in the next 30 days, we gonna, God going to make me laugh. So listen. I'm there. Hold up, bye bye, Everything laid out. I mean, I'm on my knees. And you know, you get up on your knees a little bit. Ooh, you know, in your mind, you're like, my knees is hurt. What? But I do it for you, Jesus. Oh, Rabbi Basai. He said, Elise, would you much rather be laying on the couch right now? Right. 
That ain't funny, Dick. I mean, I'm get, I'm getting in the pre- I am in the holiest of I can sworn I seen an angel. Ooh, yes. When did you rather be on your face with some cushion, Jesus? I said, Lord, and that ended my whole prayer time. Let's pack this up. It's been real, right? So, what was the Lord saying to me? You can fish so deep. You can cast out all the devils. You can prophesy. I thank God for the prophetic. You can prophesy. Oh, you can. I can see the Lord is telling me right now that you're thinking, well, please, my daughter. See, the Lord told me. No, I'm just kidding. But listen, you can do that. But yet and still. I'm on the flow. Posture it before the Lord. I much rather on some tile. I put my blanket down, but then you then you think now I left the blanket on the floor for three days because I'm not gonna put that on my bed. So now I'm sleeping with a sheet and it's cold. I'm like, oh Jesus. And then I got a new blanket. Praise the Lord. I got a new blanket. I'm just keeping it for real. Cause we can we can be so so deep and be so so miserable. So, so afflicted. The affliction of my people, poverty and misery. You could be so deep and so sick. Come on now. Now I'm revelating in the Holy Ghost. You can call me. I can listen. We're going to talk about the word. We're going to listen. I'm going to talk to you about Jesus. All that. I'm going to listen. I can talk. Listen. We're going to talk about Jesus. On the floor. People come over your house. They come over your house and we eating. At least you mind if I sit on your counter? Why do they ask me to sit on the counter? There's no table. There's no chair. But you be mar- I want to be given to hospitality. I was sitting in mom and dad's house and, you know, I was like, Lord, I want to do things like this. I want to have a no-low party. Then, you know, got a wise idea with pillows. That, no, that's just an excuse. You wouldn't get no couch. So what the Lord is telling me is that the sale is empty. Go get your couch. Now, how do you close the door behind you? Make the move. Go shopping. Right? Right? I'm going to deal with this one last thing. And the Lord said to me, and then I'll be out of your way. Been up for about an hour. One last thing, right? Now, I've been hearing this a lot. You know. This love. Walking in love. So now I thought I had my love walk down. I thought I had my love walk on point. I mean, I thought my love. Listen, you slap me and you tell me you're sorry tomorrow. I will forgive you. That's the honest God truth. I will forgive you. I will be like, hey, listen, I know you ain't mean that. Now, I can't say I won't hit you back, but I will forgive you. <laughs> now, I'm definitely getting to the turn the other cheek part. We getting there? We getting there. Okay. They call her my throw down, sister. That ain't right. So, listen. I'm almost there. A lady bumped me in, 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 in uh, Old Navy, and she threw up her hands, and I turned around. But Jazz was there to pull me away. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Don't let the smile fool you, Jesus. Amen. But anyway, so I thought I had my love walk tight. I'm going to give you two examples he gave me to show me that it wasn't as tight as I thought. So God showed me. He said, the first time he showed me, I seen, and, and you know, you can stop me if I get too, too far, right? I seen with my own eyes, and I ain't going to tell you when. It could have been a year ago. It could have been five years ago. It could have been yesterday. It could have been whatever. Somebody walk in church. So me, baby Peter, thinking I got my love walk down. Like, hey, listen. They walked in, so I went. To, I know you know my my backup. I know when I'm about, when it, when it's about to go there, I go to back it up a little bit. Like, so I'm looking like this. 
And I watch dad and mom. How you doing? How are things going? Good to see. Can somebody please help me understand what just happened? I say, now, Lord, I knew that this person was being used of the enemy because it's not the person. It's always the devil. It's not the person. It was the devil. I knew, and it was like one of the major. I say, well, Lord, how you, good to see, oh, yeah, oh, really? Oh, and just a smiling, and it was very genuine. Peter Jr., I was standing right over there. I was like, I would have hit that joker, boy. I would have hit that joker. I would have hit that joker. Like, I would have hit that joker. Okay? That's one thing when I was raised, I was never scared of nobody. Ask anybody six foot two, 350, I will hit you. I don't care because the only thing going to happen, you're going to whoop me, I'm going to whoop you. Either way, that's all that can happen. And if you make me too mad, you're going to kill me, I'm going to kill you. Whichever one, that's all that can happen. So I was never really scared of nobody. That's my mama. She had to come out to the school 50 million times. Teachers included. Listen, I will hit you. What? I can have myself on in class. What you mean? What? My mama calling me. You want to eat my mama. <laughs> so anyway, I say, Jesus, I say, now, Lord. And so this thing came up about the Jezebel spirit, right? Now, people, and the thing came up about the Jezebel spirit. I say, Father, mm-mm, Jesus, the Jezebel spirit. He said, first of all, at least that's not a spirit. I said, what? He says, no such thing as a Jezebel spirit. Now, it was spirits under her name that used her, but it's no such thing as a Jezebel. He said, look it up. I, look, I mean, I looked up the name in the Revelations and First Kings and all of this kind of stuff. I said, well, Lord. He says, at least let me tell you something in your life that you have to remember from this day forward. I said, what is that, Jesus? He said, you never know when somebody repent. You never know when they repent. I don't care if they had a Jezebel spirit, if they had the Asalam spirit, if they had any of that. I don't care. Sucking the life out you, Python. Listen, you never know when they repent. You understand what I'm saying? You never know. And so I'm sitting there, and I'm like, Lord, nah, I was ready to, nah, nah. Listen, I don't even need no Vaseline. Listen. Listen. Listen, that's my sister. Listen, I'm for real. Because I stopped taking out my jewelry because I wasn't about to get that close, so I don't have to do that. So listen. He said, at least I need you to remember that from this day forward. If you want to walk in my love, and walk with me. They could have done the worst thing. Or said the worst thing. But the moment they come to me. And they come to themselves. The moment the prodigal son came to himself. And decided to repent. And go back to his father's house. It is over. Now you still walk around with your, with your resentment in your heart. Mm-mm, no, she straight tried me. Now, she, and the lady, oh, like Jesus. The person didn't even do nothing to me. It was to them. So now I'm hot. Because I don't even think they know the magnitude of my love now. Listen, I will go to J-A-I-L. Bop my pastors. Okay? Listen, because I know I will go. I will call, I will be on the way. Barbara called Deacon Gershon. Call Deacon Lemon. Anybody. Because I will go in by them. I'm not playing. Right? So the Lord said to me, he said, at least you never know. When <laughs> listen. Listen. I'm, I got to put it away because I'll be ready. I, I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm delivered from that. You just keep confessing that. I'm delivered from that. I'm delivered from that. Jesus, I'm delivered from that. Because I don't fi- I've never, I have not. Fi- <laughs> you better say it. The temper is gone, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Because what the devil will do, he will use anything to get you away from the presence of God. So there are times where somebody will come and say something to me. Or, or some, I'll hear about something. And I will get so angry. Can you believe I had an anger problem? You really can you believe that? Oh. You didn't? Okay, Grandma, thank you. Dad just, yeah, I believe that. Okay. So I had a really, I had a really bad anger problem. Really bad. Like you couldn't say 
nothing to me. I was going to go in with you. Now, even after salvation, I was baby Peter. That's what they used to call me. I'm not going to let nobody else call me that no more. So listen, I had an anger problem, for real. And so I would hear something where I should have been the one to minister and restore you. I rebuked you. I should have been the one to minister. And the Bible says, restore your brethren. Restore. I flew off the handle and used scripture. Now, I'm not going to cuss. I don't curse. I'm not going to go that far. I don't be cursing. But yet, because I didn't understand the love of God. I didn't understand. The moment they repented, it was over. The moment they confessed their sins to God, whether it was Jezebel or whoever, it was over. No matter how they tried me, how they tried you, it's over. The sooner it can be over for you, the sooner we can go on and move on. Because if, if I'm, I'm here, and I was sitting there, and, and I'm, I'm serious, because we keep, we, it kept coming up through every prophet that came in the house, it kept coming up. And I was like, well, who, who's not over it yet? Like, it's, some, it's the reason why it keeps coming up. It keeps coming up. All, and I get excited because it's good things that's being said, right? God's going to restore. God's going to do better. God's going to do greater. God's going to do it. God's going to do it. God's going to do it. But every year, every minister, I'm like, Lord, let's just believe God. They will come to themselves or they'll just, it, or, or it's two sides to that. They will come to themselves and come on back home or they will go away from us. They were never really with us. Either one. So this night, it's all, I know, yeah, they're going. So listen, I'm just like, Lord, it just keeps coming up. So I want to encourage you. Shut the door behind you. You do that with love. You do that with diligence. You do that with obedience. Okay? So we made a decision as a body. I made a decision for things that I've done, at least have done, in the recent time. Father, forgive me. Sorry. And when you get the compassion and understanding that it's people being used by a spirit, it's not them, you'll begin to intercede for them. Instead of condemn, I begin to intercede. When a person does something to me, I, be, I literally intercede. Because that's where I am. With, that's what the Lord is showing me. When a person rebukes me, a person comes, and I know I'm like, yo, like, what's all of that? I start to intercede for them. So we as a body, shut the door behind us. God himself said, we're ready, and the cell is empty. Shut the door behind you. There is no reason why we should still be in, in old last year. I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about in your personal life, in your life. I went ahead and I bought me some chairs. Praise the Lord. Jesus, I received that. I went ahead and bought some chairs. I've already picked up my couch. In the next 30 days. So put a time stamp, put a time stamp on your stuff. Put a time stamp on your business. When we look at Peter, when he said, children, do you have any meat? Cash your net to the right side. That was his business. When he got his business in the presence of God, it prospered. So my business is now in the presence of God. I made my vow to God about this business. So get whatever it is in the presence of God. Right? So can we pray? Is that Okay. Is that okay? Because I want to celebrate that, that, that God told me himself that the cell is empty. Your old man is dead. Shut the door behind you. Shut the door behind you. If they try to bring it up to you, if your old man was gossip, shut the door behind you. I know my old man was judgment and being critical of people. Shut the door behind me. Right? My old man, I was very temperamental. Shut the door behind me. You understand what I'm saying? So let's just agree as a body. I love these Wednesday night because we are here, people. If you're here on a Wednesday night, you're de dedicated to doing this thing. Okay? Anybody listening and you couldn't make it, you're dedicated to doing this thing. Not that you couldn't because you was tired and sleepy, but something happened. Okay? So listen, we're going to pray, and you agree with me that we're shutting the door behind us. For real. In your life. That this is a time, if God said you're ready, he's expecting in June for there to be million, at least uh, $10,000 need to come in at least. I had a dream about them in a dream. In a, I woke up, I was like, Jesus, it was just a dream. And Edward was talking about his job and they was just in the dream talking. And he was like, you know, I really don't like it. But, you know, he ran to Lamika with the cell phone was like, 
Look at the deposit. Now, it was a payroll. I didn't know they get paid on the same day, right? That, I'm just dreaming. And I just woke up and told them about the dream. Hey, this is what the dream was. Deposit $19,000 in their account on their payroll. So I'm like, Jesus, you're already doing it. You're already doing it. I had, my, I had my dream about gold. So it's time, okay? I'm believing God for supernatural deposits. That is not impossible. It happened for a kilo. That is not up impossible for God, okay? But use our business. Another thing that the Lord showed me, this is the last thing I promise. He said, he said to me, he said, at least I was believing God. I said, God, the wealth of the wicked isn't laid up, for the ha- laid up for the just. I command a release before my business. I command a release. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Pour out, God. Let the rain fall. The latter and the former together. Let the windows of heaven be open over my... Now I'm praying. Intercede and praying. He said, at least um, it's laid up, but you got to go get it. It's not laid up and you're just going to be at home and... I'm a millionaire. No, you have to go get it. You have to go get it through your business, through your books, through your movies, through your apps, through your sportswear, through your stuff, through your ministry. Listen, it's laid up, but we have to go get it. I receive by faith. That word receive, I take it. Okay? Whatsoever you ask in faith, you shall receive. Whatsoever you ask in faith, you shall take. So we're deciding, shut the door behind you and go get your stuff. If the sale is empty, if your house was locked up in a sale, the sale is empty. Go get your stuff. Right? Go get your healing. If it's a knees you need it, go get your your legs. Stand up and get your legs. It's empty. That means it's yours for the taking. People say it's yours for the asking. It's yours for the taking. Okay? So, Father, we thank you for this night, God. We thank you, God, that you're faithful, that you're faithful to us, Father. Father, we even pray that your voice be strong in our ears even as we sleep, Father. That the what do you amplify the ear of our hearts, Father, that we can hear you like never before in the name of Jesus. For he's saying that I will give you dreams and visions. Dreams of instruction and visions of prosperity, the Lord says. Hallelujah. So, Father, when we sleep in our beds, Father... And we sleep with a book next door to us for ideas and inventions, Father. When we go in and throughout the earth and you're making our hands strong, God. We remember, God, God, if you be for our business, who can be against it, God? That, God, we remember the determining factor of our business is that our business is in your presence. Hallelujah. And in your presence, there is fullness. So I decree fullness of contracts in the name of Jesus. Fullness of clientele, God. Fullness of business, God. God, thank you that we don't have to create your presence, God. We get in your presence that's already established. So, Father, I pray right now, Father, that you give everyone the mindset to shut the door behind them. That we love our neighbor as ourself. That we love the Lord thy God with all of our heart and with all of our soul and with all of our mind. Father, that we've agreed in this house to keep your word in the name of Jesus. That we've, decree- that we've decided in this house, Father, that none of, this word's man- word- none of this man's words will fall to the ground. And God, you said to us, I remember when you said that we will know that a prophet has been among us. So Father, continue, God, to encourage the man and woman of God. Continue to give them a mouth and a word of, word of wisdom that even their very adversary would not be able to contradict or deny. God, continue in this season to provide us with infallible proof in the name of Jesus. God, I saw what you did for grandma the last season of infallible proof, God. Lord, you're still doing new cars for infallible proof, God. You're still doing debt-free houses for infallible proof, proofs, God. Hallelujah. The Lord says, get your hands ready. Get your hands ready. It is now the time. Hallelujah. He said, there are people, he told me this a long time ago, there are people who are already doing my word. They're already praying. They're already fasting. I won't make them wait much longer. Now is the time. I can't make for the diligent, I can't make the diligent wait for the ones who have a slack hand. 
Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you that in this very atmosphere, that we've shut the door behind us, that we press forward to the high mark and the call of your salvation. That word salvation is deliverance and prosperity in all of the, all of the good things that you have to offer us, God. So, God, as we go forth, we press toward salvation. We press toward the part where you save even our souls, God. That, Father, you said that you're the lover of our souls, Father. That, God, you will even leave our souls satisfied in 5775. That, God, you will satisfy our souls, God. Even, God, in Psalm 107, Father, you said that you will satisfy the longing soul. And the hungry soul you will feed with goodness. So, Father, our souls are longing. For those days, our souls have been hungry for those days, God. And we think that now is the time that you will satisfy our souls. God, it is no coincidence that this is the year of that the hand is through the open door. And God, you said that you open your hand and you satisfy the desires of every living thing. So, Father, as we get our desires on our mind, we thank you, God, that we trust you to satisfy. We trust you to satisfy. And, Father, in this house, we love each other and how good it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. So, Father, thank you, God, that we are a unified body, God. Hallelujah. Father, continue to speak to us even as we leave this place. Thank you that you remind us that we can always be in the holies of holies. That we can always be in your presence. That we can always enjoy fullness. That we can live out what Jesus came to do. He came to loose us from the business of the devil. So, Father, we've been loose from poverty. We've been loose from lack. We've been loose from fear. We've been loose from oppression. We've been loose from debt. We've been loose, God. We've been loose. We've been loose in the name of Jesus. We've been loose from broken relationships. We've been, we've been loose from old lifestyles. We've been loose from old strongholds. We've been loose, God. So Rababasa, we have been loose, God. And Father, thank you, God, that according to your word, we will go forth and show forth your glory. That we will go out, and if we've been loose, God, we will go out and minister the word of God and loose others. Hallelujah. So, Father God, thank you for your spirit. We ask, God, that you give us instruction, continue to speak to us. Even remind us of the instruction that we might have forgotten, God. And we think that everything that you said that you would do, you are not a liar. And you will do it. Even if we don't know what's ahead of us, Father. God, you said that you only do wondrous things. So we are not afraid of what's ahead of us. We will no longer let the devil sabotage our victory. We will no longer let the devil preach sermons to us, God. But we've been able to discern between good and evil. Hallelujah. We won't let him say that this is enough for you. This is all right. No, God says I shall be above all the people of the earth. Hallelujah. So, Father, on this night, God, we think that we already have the victory. That if the sale is empty, the charges were paid for, we already have the victory. So this is the year of rest and celebration. This is the year when what you've desired will come into your hands. I remember in the beginning of the year, I shared this with a few people. The Lord says a first quarter press, a three quarter rest. Hallelujah. A first quarter press. So things happen in the first quarter of this year that you were not expecting to happen. He said that before this year even came. He said there will be a first quarter press, but a three quarter rest. So if you press through and you've made it to April, if you have made it to the second quarter, if you have made, come on somebody, if you made it to the second quarter, now is the time. Now is the time. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. There is now no condemnation. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Candace, the Lord says there is now no condemnation. Hallelujah. There is now no condemnation. 
is done. Now, no condemnation. Hold yourself back no longer. Now, no condemnation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we thank you, God, and we praise you, God. You are the king, Father. You reign in the name of Jesus. Gigi, it's the second quarter, sugar. The second quarter. You made it. Hallelujah. Your days are going to be the brightest they've ever been. And if you decide tonight, it will be starting tomorrow. Your days will be the brightest they have ever been. You went through your first quarter. Hallelujah. The best has come. We always say it's yet to come, it's come. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Crystal, the Lord says, make a decision. Make a decision. Make a decision. I don't know what that means for you, but you're here. He said that you're here and you're there. Make a decision. He's using young people to make a firm decision that you will serve God and receive everything that he has for you. Make a decision. Make a decision. Hallelujah. Make a decision. Your sins are forgiven you. Make a decision. If he's telling you to make a decision tonight, that means he has not forgotten about you. Make a decision. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Deacon Lemon, you are not incompetent by any means. I don't care if they know more, they read more, they read better, they know more scripture. Even in your house, you are not. You are a man of God. And you're favored by God. You are favored by God. His light has shined upon your ways. You are favored by God. Get ready, the Lord says. You have been favored by God. You don't have to pop her down to anybody. You know the word that he deposited in your spirit. You don't have to be nervous before man. Anywhere in your house, anywhere. You know the word. I don't care if it seems like they know more. You know the word. And you have faith. You have been favored. Light has shined upon your ways. He saw, he saw what you've been doing. Light has shined upon your ways. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Tamara, the Lord says, don't be afraid to be beautiful. The devil will keep you in bondage to food because he knows. You're, and, and he, the Lord said, deep down inside, there is some fear in you that's afraid to be beautiful. It's like a defense mechanism to fight it off. Don't be afraid to be beautiful. Don't be afraid. It's not that you can't die. It's not that you can't do the book. It's not that you can't. The devil doesn't want you to. There is a secret subconscious mind that you're protecting yourself by not doing it the right way. By not being as beautiful as the Lord has shown you in visions. I don't know about that. I don't know if the Lord has shown you visions. You know I don't know that. But being as beautiful as he's shown you the devil is trying to stop that for you. So tell him no. Tell him no. You can do this. Be as beautiful as God has shown you to be. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Evie, a time is come, of separation is going to come for you. Where you're going to choose to sell out for God, but everyone around you won't choose the same thing. There will be people that will show up in your life that will tell you that God is not real. I don't know if they've already came or whatever. They're trying to teach you that God isn't real. He's real. And he loves you. But everyone is not going to go, want to go with you. I was there, so I know. Everyone is not going to want to go with you. But if you choose to serve God, he'll bless you. He'll give you a hundredfold of what you lose. I got better friends than I've ever had before. Ever had before. That was the main thing I was worried about losing was people. But when I let them go, God sent me some people in my life that will be with me to the end and we'll see each other in heaven. Not the one that's going to drain me dry. Not the one that's going to take, take, take. But they deposit into my life. And then he'll give you leaders. People that love and care about you and teach you. He did that for me. Then he'll give you your own assignment. There's something he's called you to do. You'll know it. But it's going to come a time when you're going to separate. You have to make that decision. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We declare every stronghold, every old mindset broken. Even the hidden, hidden stuff broken. Hidden stuff broken. Scales falling off of eyes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Latoya, come on out. Come on out. Hallelujah. Come on out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we love you and we praise you. We exalt you, God. You are worthy to be praised. We thank you, Father, that your voice is what we hear. We thank you that we've shut down the voices of the devil. Even if they, even if they try to bring confirmation, we shut down the voices of the devil. Thank you that we are delivered and set free and that we walk in love because you love. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.